In match management, how can we improve it? It's actually easier than you think. It just needs a little bit more commitment to the game. Commitment to the game, what do I mean by that? What I mean by that is, a lot of people like to steam through the game and watch highlights in key or extended. Totally fine, but if you can give me a little bit more commitment to comprehensive highlights in certain points of your match, you're gonna get lots of better results. Now, as I said, a lot of people like to watch in key or extended, which is totally cool by me. But my tip to you is, the first 10 minutes of each game, drop the extended highlights to comprehensive, even full match, if you really wanna be committed. What this does is it's gonna help us see how the game is panning out, how the teams are forming, how the formations are looking, and if our player roles are doing what we want them to do. There's a few different points in the game where I use comprehensive highlights. The first is pretty obvious, it's the first 10 to 15 minutes. In that first 10 to 15 minutes, you can kind of gauge what the match is gonna look like, how the two teams are shaping up, how the formations are looking. The next time I like to use it is five minutes after a goal. So you can see the response of the opposition team or the response of your team to going ahead or behind. The second half starts, that's another good time to watch. Again, similar to the start of the game, shows the team shape, any changes from half time to formations or roles. And the last point I like to watch in comprehensive is the last 10 minutes of a close game. When it's going either way, when it's in the balance, do you go more defensive? If you hold on to a lead, do you go attacking? Is the gaps forming? That's when we'll be able to see that a little bit better. Which leads me to the second important point. For the first 10 or 15 minutes of this game, we're set up for our comprehensive highlights. Now, next important factor is the camera angle. A lot of people like to use director or TV because it looks cool, the flow's really nice. Totally get that. But for the comprehensive highlights, and to really see what's going on, there's a few camera angles I like to use. First one is sideline, you can see pretty much the whole pitch, it gives you a really nice insight into the layout and the formations of your rivals. Another option is the classic, 2D classic, you see the whole pitch and you can't get a better insight of a formation lineup than that, can you? The last one, and it's one that doesn't get used near enough, is data analyst view. If you look on there, you can see the whole pitch, this is the view, tricks in the name, that the data analyst uses to gather all the stats up because it gets the best view of each player in the formation layouts. We've got a game running here. I'm gonna watch it for the first 10 minutes and it helps me show the formations that are getting played. So if my team, for example, I've got them in a back four with a really attacking left-sided fullback. Kenyon is the one who's my left-sided fullback there, highlighted. And you can see how advanced he is compared to the other three defenders. So I know he's doing his job initially perfectly. More importantly for me, it's how the opposition are shaping up and where potential gaps might be. Now looking at this, I can see they've got a back four across there, back four across there, and they've got a really wide man on the left. It looks like he's gonna be that outlet ball, and it looks like only one up front. So initially, I can see Grimsby basically coming for the draw. They're gonna have four at the back, they've got a holding midfielder there, you can see how deep he is. They've got a central midfielder there alongside Clifton. So it looks like a 4-1, 4-1 formation for Grimsby. Now you might say, the formation's at the start of the screen, I already knew that. Yeah, you did, but did you know how withdrawn their central midfielder was gonna be? Did you know how advanced their left-sided midfielder was gonna be? Did you know how withdrawn their right-sided midfielder was gonna be? So looking at that, I can probably say that the avenue to success for us probably won't be down that side there, It'll be more likely down this side because there's gonna be more gaps because their left-sided midfielder is hella attacking. Another good thing it's gonna show me is a mentality of the opposition. Now look at this, the ball is right in our side of the pitch, right up our top end. But look at the lack of players that have committed forward. They've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven behind the ball, not actually in attacking positions. So that shows they're gonna be playing a cautious game. So after seeing they were gonna be trying to push on down their left, we wanted to focus our player down their right to try and find the goals. We ended up winning the game 3-1 against the team, two divisions above us. We focused our player down the right-hand side and two of our three goals came from that avenue, which shows it works, which is great. So we've managed to pick out their potential weakness using the higher camera view and using comprehensive at the start. So here we go, Lynch. They will probably start most of your focus play, your midfielders, finds the right-hand side Sosa, exploits the gaps, wins a penalty, gets us the all important second goal. Job done, 